Good morning, student. Today we are going to verify the law of Molnar forces. In my earlier video, I already explained you about the theory of law of Molnar forces. Here, yeah, what is law of Molnar forces? Uh, how to uh, prove it by using the practical method? Here, yeah, or how to add the vectors by using the law of Molnar uh, of the tradition? That everything I explained you in my earlier video. Today. We are going to, in our lab, actually verify the law of all one of forces by conducting the experiment. We are conducting this experiment on this uh, universal force table. This apparatus is known as a universal force table. Now, why this table is known as a universal force table? The reason is that by using this apparatus, we can verify the different laws which we use in mechanics. By using this universal force table, we can verify the triangle law, we can verify the polygon law of forces, as well as we can verify the Lamy's theorem also. Yeah. So, since we can conduct a number of experiments on this apparatus, that's why it is known as a universal force table. On this universal force table, on this disc, yeah, the angles are engraved. Here, yeah, this is divided into 360 degree. You can observe that here, yeah, these are the marking of 360 degree. Okay, and on this disc, here, yeah, these pulleys are mounted. Yeah, because with the help of this pulley, we can apply the force on this disc here yeah, by using the this pulleys and the thread element. Okay. This pulley will not provide any mechanical advantage. The pulley is just used to apply the force in a convenient direction. Okay. Now this force table is in the horizontal level. So we, it is very difficult to apply the force in horizontal position. That's why by using this pulley we are applying the force and it is actually applying on this uh, ring horizontal. Okay. This, that's why we are using this pulley. Now the position of this pulley we can lose this screw. Here and we can change the position means angle of this force. Yeah, and we can tie that at particular position. So this is the universal force table. Now other apparatus which we require are the pulleys, then weights, thread, and this ring which we have to settle at the center. The different weights which we are going to use here is 100 gram, here 50 gram, 25 gram. And 10 grams. All these weights are in the 10 gra in grams. Here, and you have to do the calculation. By doing the calculations, you have to convert this gram into the newton. Okay. Now, for starting the experiment, we have the first precautions which you have to take is that this uh, universal force table should be exactly in the horizontal position. Now, to check whether it is in the exactly horizontal position or not, here we are going to use here this uh, spirit level. Okay, here and we check whether it is exactly in horizontal position or not. Here you can observe that here that bubble is exactly at the center. Here now also it is exactly at the center, and in this position also it is exactly at the center. Okay, so it is now completely in the horizontal position. If it is not, then by adjusting this leveling screw at the bottom of this universal force table here you can adjust the force table okay again one adjustment is here also by unscrewing this knob here we can change the position of this universal force table also here so by uh, this using this leveling screw and this screw here you can adjust it exactly in the horizontal level here so before starting the experiment you have to take precaution that here the table should be exactly in horizontal position Okay, now we are going to start our experiment. Now, in experiment, I have already told that in law of polygon of forces, we are, we are applying, we are, we are creating one force system in which there will be the five different forces. We are, we are creating a force system which consists of the five concurrent forces. Okay, and while creating this force system, that force system will be in equilibrium. Mean the resultant of that force system will be zero. Now, law of polygon of forces states that the number of forces acting on a body are represented by 
the sides of a polygon taken in order that the closing side represents their resultant. We are from a example from my earlier video. But now when the system is in equilibrium, here its resultant must be equal to zero. And if the resultant is zero, here the closing side of a polygon which represents the resultant here should be zero or it will not be there. Means the last point of the polygon must coincide with the first point. Then only we can say that the system is in equilibrium and that only work. Here with that five forces which are in equilibrium, if you plot the polygon by representing the forces graphically, it must be a closed figure. Okay, if it is not closed, then there must be some error in the experiment. Okay, so this is the basic theory behind this experiment. Now, next, how to create the force system? Okay, so I already told you that with the help of this pulley, we are going to apply the different forces at the different angles. Yeah. The first pulley here, sorry, I'll show it here. This is a ring on which we are applying the five onward forces. Yeah. The first force we are always applying at an angle of zero degree. Yeah, so this is the zero degree. We are applying the first force F1. Yeah, second force we will apply F2 at an angle of this here with respect to the zero degree we are going to measure the angle so we have theta r1 equal to zero this is the angle whereby this f1 force with respect to this reference the reference we are considered as a zero degree this angle will be theta r2 yeah, this is the angle whereby this f2 with respect to the zero degree yeah, then this is the force f3 yeah, and this angle will be the theta r3 yeah, and this force is F4. The angle made by this F4 force with respect to the positive x-axis here yeah, is like this theta 4. And yet this is the F5. And angle made by this F5 with the positive x-axis in anti-clockwise direction is theta 5. We are going to measure all the angles in anti-clockwise direction with respect to the positive x-axis. Okay. So we have created this force system here yeah, which will be in equilibrium. So to creating this system in equilibrium, you have to adjust the magnitude of these forces as well as direction so that this ring should be exactly at the center. Okay, here you will observe that here in this force table, here there is one pivot at the center. Here now the ring is touching to the center. Okay, it is not exactly at the center, it is touching to the center. Oh, sorry, pivot. And because of that, that uh, reactive force is generated. Yeah, we have to adjust the forces and angles such that this ring should be exactly at the center. Then we can say that it is in equilibrium under the action of this five forces. Okay. Now I am applying the forces here uh, by using this thread and the pulley, and I am creating this force system which keep the ring in equilibrium. Yeah. So let's apply the forces. Now at the end of this thread, here there is one hook. And at the end of the hook, here yeah, this weight is applied. So this weight is 50 gram. This is the total 50 gram, including the weight of this hook. This is total 50 gram. Here yeah, this plus weight of the hook. It is total 50 gram. And now we are applying the forces on this. Okay, we are applying the weight. This is 50 gram. Here I am applying. Okay, here I am applying the 50 gram. Then we will become 100. Okay, I am applying here 25 gram. Here also I am applying the 25 gram. Again 50 gram. Sorry, it is 25 gram. Okay, in this way we have to change total all together. We have to take the five different readings. Here by changing the angles and forces. Here for five different forces, you can make any combination of the five forces and five angles to keep this ring exactly in the middle position in equilibrium. Okay, here you can change the forces and you can change the angles. It is a little bit time consuming process. Here you have to do the lot of adjustment. Yeah. Now while taking the reading, here take care that this uh, 
force at this plate or this hanger should not oscillate. Yeah. So uh, switch off the fans. Yeah. So it should not oscillate. Secondly, the there should not be any friction between the pulley and the weight. If there is the friction, then the applied force and the applied force and the force acting on the ring will be different because of the friction in the plate and the pulley or the rope and the pulley. Okay. So there should be a minimum friction. Yeah. Then while attaching the pulley, you have to attach the pulley properly so that yeah there should not be any. The pulley should not be in inclined position. Okay, you have to attach the pulley properly. Yes, yeah, so now it is very time-consuming process to adjust the load as well as the angles. Here, yeah? so you can adjust the load as well as angles. Here, yeah? now here suppose on this side the this side the force is more, this side the force is less. That's why the pulley is moving on this side. Means I require the more force on this side. So I will apply the forces there. Okay, I will apply the forces here. Now I adjust the forces and angles and then I will uh, show you again. Yes, the plot uh, pause the video. Now you can observe that we have adjusted the weight here such that the ring is exactly at the center. Here it is not touching to this pivot. Okay. Now let's consider this force is a F1 which is at 0 degree. You can observe that it is at a 0 degree. Okay. Yeah, so let's consider this as a force F1 which is at the 0 degree and just count how much is the force here applied. Yeah, so 1 is a 50 and then 25 plus 25 means F1 force is of 100 gram. Okay, yeah, this F1 force is of 100 gram. At an angle of, so this is F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5 for the force running. F1 is 100 gram, which you have to convert in Newton later on. I will explain you how to do the calculation. Here, yeah, so this is F1 and theta 1. So theta 1 is 0 degree. Now, second force F2. So this is the F2. Here, yeah, this F2 is at an angle of uh, 79 degree. Theta 2 is 79 degree. And how much is the weight applied here? Here, yeah, so it is. Uh, 50, 25, 25, 25, 25 is 150 and this is 10 gram. This small weight is of 10 gram. Here, so it is 150 and 10, 160 gram. So F2 force is of 160 gram. Here we shall apply at an angle of 79 degree with positive x axis. This you have to consider as a positive axis. Here, then this is the third force. The third force is applied at an angle of here 155 degree. Here, uh, take the reading properly. Avoid the parallax error. Here, so it is 155 gram. Sorry, 155 and theta 3 is 155. And how much is the F3? The force F3 is it is 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 50. Means it is 150 gram. F3 is 150 gram. Now this is F4 force. Here F4 force is uh, 100 and 125, 125 gram. F4 is 125 gram and theta 4, how much is the theta 4? This angle is approximately 240. Okay, it is 240. And this is F5. Here yeah, this is uh, again 125. And theta 5, how much is angle? Its angle is... Uh, 296 degree. Okay, so we have created such type of one concurrent force system here, which is in equilibrium. This is 100, this is uh, 160, this is uh, 150, 125, and this is again 125. Okay, yeah, and now with the help of this force system, we have to do the law of polygonal forces. Yeah. Now with these five forces, if I plot the force polygon by representing these forces graphically, it must be a closed figure because the system is in equilibrium. Since the system is in equilibrium, the resultant force should be zero and the force polygon must be a closed figure. Here in my next video, I am going to explain you how to do the calculation. Okay, here we can put the same reading or I can take a different reading and by using a different reading, I can explain you how we can do the calculation. Okay.
clear? Any doubt? Now, if the resultant is not zero, if I plot the proof polygon, and if you observe that the resultant is not zero, similarly, if you calculate the resultant analytically also, clear by plotting the force polygon in that is the graphical method. But even if you find out the resultant of these five forces analytically by resolving the forces, clear, the resultant must be zero. Clear, graphically, the force polygon must be a closed figure. Clear, analytically, the resultant must be a zero. If it is not, clear, here if the uh, polygon is not a closed figure, if the resultant is not zero, doesn't mean that here the law of polygonography is not verified. Here that may be because of uh, some error present in this equipment. Here because the pulleys may not be exactly frictionless. Here then the forces which we are applying. Here we are applying the forces only 10 gram, 25 gram and 50 gram. Here for exact equilibrium, here the force may require 165 gram, 175 gram and it is little bit difficult to prepare that combination in our lab. Okay, yeah, so because of some uh, error, experimental error, here we are not getting the exact return. But, yeah, even if you are getting the, some resultant, but the resultant will be very, very small as compared to this applied force. Here, if that applied forces are 100, 125, 160 grams, so even if uh, something, some experimental errors are there, so graphically or analytically, if you calculate the resultant, it will be very, very low, uh, less, here may be 1 gram to 5 gram. Yeah, this is because of this experimental error. Yeah, thank you. In the next uh, video, I am going to explain you how to do the calculation with this. Yeah, so you have to do the calculation and you have to write down the conclusion and uh, result. Okay?